सो नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दी प्रिमेटिव टाइप्स इन गोलाइन सो देर आर डिफरेंट प्रिमेटिव टाइप्स अवेलेबल सो विल बी जस्ट गोइंग थ्रू फ्यू ऑफ दैम वी विल स्टार्ट विद दी बुलियन टाइप्स देन वी विल गो हेड विद दी न्यूमेरिक टाइप्स इन दिस न्यूमेरिक टाइप्स विल गो थ्रू इंटीजर्स फ्लॉटिंग पॉइंट्स एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर्स एंड आफ्टर दैट विल गो थ्रू दी टेक्स टाइप्स सो लेट्स गो हेड एंड स्टार्ट विद दी बुलियन टाइप्स सो बुलियन टाइप्स इन गो लैंग्वेज विल बी हैविंग जस्ट अ बुलियन वैल्यूज ट्रू और फॉल्स इफ आई क्रिएट द वेरिएबल वेरिएबल ऑफ फू ऑफ टाइप बुल इक्वल्स टू फॉल्स सो दिस इज जस्ट द सिंपल डिक्लेरेशन ऑफ अ बुलियन टाइप इन Go language. Either we can start with false or we can give the value true as well. Let's print this value out. We will use the FMT package to print this. Okay, print f and we will pass the percentage v and percentage t and we will give foo comma foo. So this is my boolean type. Let's run this. We will get the false and bool. We can give directly true over here as well. So this is the other value. We can directly assign the values without giving this as we saw in the variables video. Directly we will give this way. So this is a very simple type and very simple declaration of a boolean type in Go language. Now let's go ahead and check the different numeric types. Numeric types comes in three different types: either integer, floating point, or complex numbers. Let's start with the integers. To create the integer, as we saw in the variables, so we'll just give the variable i int equal to twelve over here, and we will print this i value over here. Let's just run this again. We will get the value twelve. Now integer comes into different types as well. So there are different bytes available for the integer. So if you see over here, you can see that we are having integer eight, integer sixteen, integer thirty two, integer sixty four, and we are also having the default integer type as well. All these integer values will be storing the different size. Okay, so I'll be just adding the screenshot over here, so you can see that these all the different integer values will be storing the different values available. Okay, so the range would be different to store the values. so these are signed data types you will be having the data from the negative to positive range okay there are also unsigned variables available so if you start with the u int so you can see that we are also having u int u int 8 16 32 64 also available so this will be having the unsigned values so it will be having the equivalent positive values for the equivalent signed integer values so if you want to use unsigned integers or unsigned value types of numeric then you can use this as well so let's see how we can mix match those types and how to use this variables so suppose i created the variable integer of 8 over here and i am creating the other variable variable J integer of sixteen, and here I am passing the value i over here. So you can see that though it is a type of same integer, it is not allowing to directly save the value. You have to explicitly type cast because there might be a chance that you are using integer eight and you are saving into integer sixteen. So it is a higher byte value, then you can save those values over here. But if you are uh, doing reverse, if you are saving integer sixteen value to integer eight, so there might be a chance like half of the bits may get destroyed or may not get the value accordingly. So if you are doing vice versa, if you are saving the j value to i so integer 16 value will be stored to integer 8 value and data may lost so that's why go language doesn't allow you to implicitly define the value if you want you can explicitly define go language that i want to store this then go language will store that value so if i do again over here with integer 16 then it will allow me to store that particular value okay now i can print this variable Okay, you can see that I am able to get twelve integer eight and twelve integer sixteen. Now let's check the different arithmetic operations available. Okay, so let me just remove all these things. Let me just create the variable i equals to twenty and j equals to three. Now let's see the different arithmetic operations. Okay, so I'll just do dot print ln and let me just pass i plus j. So you can use the addition operator to do the arithmetic. Let's add all these details. Okay, let me just copy paste all those lines. We can do i plus j, i minus j, i multiply by j, i divide by j, and i modulo of j. So these are all the different arithmetic operations that are available for the integer types. Okay, you can do addition, subtractions, multiplication, division, and you can get the modulus. You will get the remainder of it. Okay, so let's run this. So you can see that you are getting i plus j to twenty three, i minus j. You are getting the multiplication value. You are getting the division value twenty divided by three, and you are getting the remainder. Okay, so when you are doing the i divided by j, then you will be getting the quotient, and when you are doing i modulo of j, then you will be getting the remainder values. As when you are working with the integer types, you won't be getting the output in the floating point. Okay, so this is the thing that you have to take care in the mind. So there are different binary operators also available. So let's see those as well. Okay, so the binary operators are a and b, a or b, caret and. So, M percent and carrot we can give. 
so these are the different binary operators available so this all operations will be done in the binary form okay so whatever the value you are assigning over here that will be converted into binary and accordingly the operations will be performed so let's run this again and you can see that you are getting this data so this all data has been converted to binary and with that binary this all operations are being executed so you can use this as well so these are the things available in the go language now let's see the floating points variable okay let's remove all this thing let's create the floating point let's see i equals to 3.14 okay so this is the floating point variable okay we are giving the decimal values we can also define the decimal values using the j colon equals to 1.7 e raised to 12 this way also we can give the values we can also give the values this way 2.3 e raised to 12 let's print all these values we'll use the fmt package we'll use the printf percentage v percentage t and let's copy all these values and give the proper value over here okay i'll give j over here and i'll give k over here and let's run this again and you can see that we are getting the float 64 values and we're getting the proper value now in the float also there are two types of floats available right variable if i do variable l equals to float 32 and float 64 so, so these are the two types available according to the size that you have to use you can use either float 32 or float 64 by default if you are not assigning any type then it will be always float 64 okay go language will always take the higher precedence now let's see the different arithmetic operations available in the float type so let me just add these two values over here let me do 5.6 okay let me just remove this let's add the different operators over here we'll do fmt dot parental n we can do i plus j i minus oh sorry you have to give y right and then we can do i multiply by j and then we can do i divide by j there won't be having a modular operator as we are working with the floating point we can get the floating point output over here okay so let's run this again let me clear this out and let's run this so you can see that we are getting the proper values okay we are get getting the addition here we have to take the subtraction so let's run it again okay you can see that we are getting the proper values addition subtraction multiplication and division over here so these are all the arithmetic types available to work with the floating point variables now let's see the complex types available in the go language so let me just remove everything over here now to create a complex type there are two complex types available okay so if i create variable i of type complex you can see that there are two complex types available complex 64 and complex 128 so this complex 64 and complex 128 are been created using the floating points internally so if you create complex 64 then the value you would be giving is the real part and the imaginary part so suppose you are giving 1 plus 2 i right so this will be the real value and this will be the imaginary value so both real value and imaginary value are of float type so if you are using the complex 64 then the real and imaginary part will be of float 32 if you are using the complex 128 then real and imaginary part will be of float 64 let's print this value over here okay fmt dot printf person t slash n i comma i let's print this so you can see that the value you are getting is 1 plus 2i and it is of type complex 64 you can also change it to complex 128 according to the values that you are storing okay you will be getting the complex 128 as well so suppose if you are not storing the real values if you are just storing the 2i over here then the go language will understand that 2i if you are specifying over here then this is the imaginary part so the imaginary value should be 2i and if you are not passing any real value then it should be initialized with the default value so let's check that as well so if you run this you can see that you will be getting 0 plus 2i so 0 is initialized as the default value for float so that is 0 and 2i that you are passing so if you are not passing anything over here then it will initialize with the default value for both real and imaginary part and you can get this 0 plus 0i so let's give this again 1 plus 2i now from this particular complex number if you want to get the values of an imaginary or if you want to get the values of a real number then there are two methods available real and image that you can use so let's use that as well i'm printing this as a default value over here complex 128 and for this part let's take the real value out with the real method and what is the real type also we can get with this real and for the imaginary what is the imaginary value with the image function we can get this so let's use that image function 
in the booth okay let's run this let's clear it out first and let's run this again so the first value you can see that we are getting as 1 plus 2i which is of type complex 128 because we have passed the value over here and the next you can see that the real values we are getting real as 1 from here and that is of type float 64 the imaginary is 2 and that is of type float 64 and if i change this value and i run it again then you can see that we'll be getting the float 32 over here so this way you can get the real and imaginary values also out of the complex number now the question may arise is how to create the complex number right currently i have directly defined the values but how to create programmatically so to create a programmatically there is a function available that is called complex so you can see that complex function is available and inside this complex function you can pass the imaginary value and you can pass the real value so i'm passing 2 and 4 over here that is real value and imaginary value okay so let's run this and check so you can see that we are getting the value 2 plus 4i as I have passed real value as 2 and imaginary value as 4 and we can get the real and image part as well out of this. So this way you can create the complex numbers also in the Go language. So these are the three main methods that you can use to work with the complex number data type. Now in this complex data type also there are arithmetic operations available. So let's check that as well okay. So let me just create the other variable j colon equals to 1 plus 6i. Now let's use the arithmetic operators fmt.println I'll print all those things over here then I can use i plus j i minus j i multiply by j so you can see that we have added all the different operations available all the different arithmetic operators available and you can see that we are getting the error over here that invalid operations mismatch type complex 64 and complex 128 so when we are directly defining over here at that time you will be getting the complex 128 and when I, when I defined over here it is complex 64 so we cannot do operations on a mismatch type you have to type cast it or you have to do in the same type so let me just change this type over here and let's do the operation for the simplicity okay so these are the operations available let me just clear it out and run it again so you can see that these are the different answers available values available 2 plus 4i plus 1 plus 6i is equal to 3 plus 10i right correct and the same way 2 plus 4i minus 1 plus 6i is 1 minus 2i the same way multiplication and the same way division operator so this way we can do the arithmetic operations on our complex numbers as well now the text type that is a string so let's see that how to create these strings okay let me just remove everything let's create string this is a string okay and let's print this out we'll give percent v percent t comma s comma s and let's run this okay you can see that this is a string of type string let's create the other string over here this is another string okay so this is another string that we have created and if you want we can append this two strings using the plus operator and these two strings will be appended over here so you can see that these two strings are appended so you, if you want to concatenate these two strings you can use using the plus operator now if you want to take a particular byte out of it okay you can take using the the square brackets over here okay let me just remove this comment this out so you can get the first character out of it okay so if you, if you run this you can see that we are getting the first character out of it and that value is in ascii character right because internally string stores in the byte format okay streams of byte so that's why you will be getting this way if i change this to string you can see that you are getting the h okay first character because we are having the zero based index okay so this way you can get value out of this particular square bracket also if you want a particular bit of it now as we have read the value of this particular variable let's see how to save also so I suppose if i do this way as of one equals to instead of h let's add u over here and let's print the string only okay what will happen over here so you can see that we are not able to assign directly because a string contains a stream of bytes so all those data are in byte format so you can only add the data in the byte format you cannot assign directly string to a particular character so suppose if you want your entire string to convert into byte and you to get the all the ascii characters of each and everything so what you can do is you can convert that entire string into byte array and you can store it to any of the variable and create a byte array and you can loop through it and you can do the operations also on that so suppose if i create this way s1 equals to i'll create a byte array and will pass s over here and let me just print the s1 over here then my entire this is a string will be converted into my byte array 
okay you can see that this is the entire byte array of unsigned 8 integer so these all are ascii values okay so if you want this way then also you can convert your entire string into byte array and you can do some operations on it so you can see that string is of type utf8 okay we are getting the utf8 values over here but there is also one more type available that is a rune so rune will be of utf32 so if you want to create a rune what you can do is just remove everything over here so rune is created with the single quotes okay so if you convert your double quotes to single quotes then this is a rune so this is a rune and it will store the data into utf32 so let's run this let me just clear this and so you can see that the utf value for this particular t will be 32 and it will store the data into in 32 format so if you want you can use rune also but there are many different complex methods available to work with rune so most of the times we'll be working with the string only in go language but if you want there is an option available that will store the data into utf32 so these are all the things available in the primitive data types we saw boolean type we saw numeric types that will contain integers floating points and complex numbers and integer also has have signed and unsigned values with integer 8 16 32 and floating point also have float 32 and float 64 we also saw the complex number that have complex 64 and complex 128 where each individual part of real and imaginary is divided into their equivalent floating points for complex 64 it is float 32 plus float 32 and for complex 128 it's float 64 plus float 64 we also saw how to work with the text type that is string we saw all the different operations what we can do and how the data has been stored inside a string that is in the byte format. We also saw the basics of rune but most of the time we won't be working with the rune, we will be working with the strings. If any of you guys are working with the rune in Go language then let me know in the comment section below. I want to know what are the different use cases and how you are uh, using rune in your projects as well. So let me know in the comment section below. So these are all the things available in the primitive types in Go language.